Hello, Sharon Hurst here again. Welcome back to the studio. Nice to see you again. I thought today that maybe we'd have a little think about inspiration. People often ask, where does the inspiration come from? How do you get the ideas? What happens in your head? You must have amazing dreams. And I don't really. It's completely different. It's things that I hear and things that I see and places I go and I love a good story. But more about stories later on in the week. We're going to talk about those then. A story will give you the picture. So that's what's going on here behind me and I'll explain that another day. But think about all of those things that you do in your life that mean so much to you and how it makes you think about them. Regarding myself, I started off in oh the 1970s with the most amazing album art. Do you remember? Are you old enough to remember that? I used to sit on my bed and listen to the music and the vinyl albums used to be covered with the most incredible, beautiful artwork. Um, very often the, the cover of the album would even be a book and I used to sit and pour through those and listen to the words and imagine the stories and the lands and the places that these albums were taking me. Two of the greatest artists at that time are my heroes even now today and you have Rodney Matthews and this is his work here very, very futuristic, exciting, different worlds, different creatures. Let me see if I can find something that might be particularly interesting to you and exciting. Was to me. How about that? These amazing, incredible worlds that he painted and designed and I loved them, absolutely loved them. If you're thinking about a film nowadays, go back to Avatar when Avatar came out and the gorgeous artwork. 65 artists worked on that film, oh and I wished I'd have been one of them. But another artist that was very very like Rodney Matthews was Roger Dean and loved his work too. Dragons and again strange worlds and strange islands. This is the man that first came up with the concept of the floating islands and um, oh, I just loved it all. I had his posters on my bedroom wall and um, I, it was so surreal and exciting, I loved it. Just loved it, loved these different places that these people could take me to. Sometimes it's the words of a song. So I'll show you some more of that later. And sometimes it can just be the beautiful things around me. And that includes my garden. And so many of you know that I grow these strange plants in my garden. I call them weirdos. And in my greenhouse, I collect odd and unusual plants. And they are an endless source of imagination and fun and excitement for me when I go out and I see a new flower or a new bud opening and I need to paint it. So let's travel through some of the things that I've painted and some of the things I see every day for starters, come with me, come and have a walk round the garden. I think for inspiration, if you're a gardener and an artist, you can't beat the garden, can you? From the fronds of sweeping grasses through to the majestic oaks that stand here at the bottom, hundreds of years old probably, you can't beat a garden. I love my garden. It's a passion that is almost as fierce as the painting. In fact, it may even be more so. And it's the plants that I grow and the way that I grow them that gives me my inspiration. I love Santa Decia, so here we go. Let me show you these beautiful, beautiful lilies. 
and the leaves are exquisite with their spotty, spotty backs and the red, dark red stems and the gorgeous flowers, the pollen that sits on the stamens. And when it rains, the water sits on these and beads on them. It's incredible. It, it's just like beautiful pearls of water sitting there on the leaves and on the flowers. The bees that pollinate the garden and buzz around. And then this kind of amazing structure of this plant here. Look at that with its beautiful flowers. grasses, the colours, the shadows, the light. This time of day is probably one of my favourites, early in the morning and then of course later on in the evening when the golden light glows up underneath the branches of the trees, when the sun is low and it makes the tree trunks all shine golden. As a child, I, every morning I'd have breakfast and I remember walking up the garden every single day if I could, if it wasn't raining. And my parents saying to me, don't get wet feet on the dew on the grass. Because of course that meant that I'd have to go to school with wet, my wet leather sandals. Roses, I adore roses. And then we have this, another gorgeous lily here. This is another Xantodesia. Look at the colours here. Again, we've got the spotty leaves. But here, these lovely, lovely petals and flowers. Statuary, it's a good thing. I enjoy that because again that gives you structure in the garden so that you can work to that and use that as your focal point maybe. The smell of beautiful orange trees when they blossom. This one's just about to come out into flower. As we walk down, the lovely, lovely flowers on this blue clematis. I've painted that a few times. And we've all seen hostas, haven't we? With the rain and the water drops on hostas and how incredible they look. But I've kept this one well this year. For some reason, I haven't been troubled with slugs. Although saying that, we've had lots and lots of hedgehogs in the garden this year. So that's been rather nice, so they've been eating all the nasty stuff. And this is the wild bit down the bottom of the garden. So a bench to sit on with a beautiful lace, so that, that will go beautiful dark red in the autumn. And the gunnera. Now I hope later on to show you some pictures of the gunnera in the, when the sun's on it, because of course the light shines through this. Rather a prehistoric plant, this one. And again, rather good for painting and drawing, because you've got these incredible incredible flowers on it here so they're just amazing and when you get very close not now they're not the pollen's not there yet but they will all have little orange spots on them um, where the pollen sits along that stem and incredible really and color Oh, the colour, colour of some things is just shocking. And you try desperately, don't you, to uh, replicate it in a painting. I think that's half the fun, really, trying to find the colour that matches. I love grasses. These incredible grasses with the little tiny bull, bulrush type of heads on it. I'm having a go at some cloud topiary. We've all seen this, haven't we, with Japanese trees. So this one's all been, it was, it started its life like this. It's, it was columna and now I have um, pruned it and trimmed it and with weights I've pulled down the branches and hopefully one day they will stay like that and then I can have pom-poms on the end of the branches. 
And this is my special bit of garden right here. This is my garden for peace and quiet and a bit of tranquility. So when I've been to you for the day and I've worked, to, I've done a workshop or a demonstration and I come home in the evening, this is my place to be and I will bring my glass of wine and you can imagine me sitting down here in the last of the evening sun. The sun's down here in the evening and I'll sit here and have a glass of wine and just enjoy my little, I've got a stone circle there. My family think I'm balmy. They're probably not wrong, are they? I can't have Stonehenge, I don't have enough room, but I can have my mini henge. So I have that there. And here, this is a bit of willow. I broke a twig and I brought the twig home and just put it in the ground and that one day will be, I hope, a lovely willow tree to shade this area in the evenings. And around here, excuse the table, this is my hazel tree and I fight the squirrels every year for this, for the cob nuts. But what I do with this is I use this to hang my wishes and prayers in. Here we go. And it's strung with beads and bits of ribbon and when I have a wish or I have a prayer for somebody, I come and I hang it in the tree. So crazy as it sounds, it makes me feel better. I've got jewellery bits and pieces here that I've hung when my mum left me this year and I brought down her bits and pieces of necklace and I've put them in the tree so that she's with me in the garden when I'm here. But this is my lovely sheltered little spot and um, I love it down here. So our gardens do our souls good I think. It gives us somewhere to get our hands in the dirt and somewhere to look at colours and to look at shape and form and it's all there for us, we just have to find it. The colours on the leaves, the shapes on the leaves and when we've found that and we can replicate that on a piece of paper or on a canvas, life is much better, much this better. This is my other go-to hidey hole and many of you will know this from previous visits out here to the greenhouse. This is my weirdo palace. You'll know that I love growing strange plants, odd, unusual and strange plants. And these are the endless source of paintings and drawings and sketches and illustrations. The shapes and form again are quite incredible and many of them are the ugliest little brutes that you can imagine. But when you look at the flowers and you get right down a deep and dirty here, the shapes and the colours on the flowers are gorgeous. The shapes on the plants themselves. Here we have this Senecio and look at those scales. That to me says dragon's tail. And this one here says to me dragon's skin. Look at that. If you could paint that and replicate that, how cool would that be? If we look over here, these are stone plants, they're called lithops, and they sit there in the gravel like this, but they have the most beautiful patterns on them. And I, I enjoy looking at things like this for textures, for stones, like this, look. They're, they're just beautiful. They sit there very low to the ground because out in the wild the animals will just graze anything on the veldt but if they're buried like this they can't chew them. They don't recognise them. How about this for shape and form? This is a kind of faciation when, when everything goes a bit mad, all the cells go mad and, and grow in strange ways. But again, it gives me ideas for texture. This, spots, again on a dragon's skin perhaps. All these lovely different things, flowers. This one's flowering at the moment, real beauty. This is called a monkey's tail for obvious reasons. It's just what it looks like. But the flowers are absolutely beautiful. Little lipstick flowers that stand out from the plant. Again, lovely, lovely to draw and paint.
And if anybody wants to take a still of any of these to use it for themselves, you're very, very welcome. You'll use anything that you want to that I can produce here for you. We all know dandelions, but then have you seen a dandelion like this? This is, is very much the same sort of idea, all these little florets but on a green plant. Interesting, it's interesting. The colour of an Aeonian, this beautiful Schwarzkopf, blackhead it's called, but amazing colour. To me, that would be alizarin crimson and some burnt umber and a bit of Payne's grey to try and replicate something like that. All these strange, strange things. But they're exciting and it means that it gives me diversity when I'm looking for shapes and forms and how shadow lays one scale under another. There it is. There's, there's your, your scalage. Look. How would scales lie on either armour or on dragons? Just like that with the shadow underneath the one on top. Bees love it in here. I've always got bees in the greenhouse with me when I'm out here. I, I work out here to the accompaniment. How about that for colour? Look at that gorgeous red with the dark edge around it. Ideas, ideas. Dragon scales. Again, here it is. This is the strangest thing. Ugly as can be, really. Let's be honest. But the perfume of that, I wish it was smell -o vision It's honey. It smells just like honey and it perfumes the whole greenhouse. But again, look at the texture on the body of it. And this is where I come once again when I'm looking for ideas that I can use for my structure. And this one here, these aren't just bobbles on, on long sticks. Okay, it's, just, it's like a string of pearls, but when we look and we get close up, Quite incredible because you can see through. Oh, it's struggling to focus. A minute, let's see. We can see through that central um, line down the middle of each one, and it's almost as though it's full of clear fluid. But we've got these gorgeous striations along each single bobble. And this one's completely different. This one here, same idea. But these gorgeous colours again, this purple, try a magenta for that maybe. And then of course we've got something like this. How's that for style? That's a very easy pattern to replicate in watercolour. And I'll show you a painting right here. And then if we come over to this, this is another good texture to use for your watercolour. This particular plant is called freckles for obvious reasons. Look at the spots. Wet into wet that would be. Paint the green, leave it wet and then put the brown in on top, the ready brown in on top. And then of course we have the real weirdos. We've got these gorgeous, well I think they're gorgeous. Um, I like my... Uh, carnivorous plants. Um, they're quirky, they're fun and they really are living because they help themselves to their own food. They go catch it. They go find it. But again the colours of these, the red throats of the Venus flytrap and the spines are quite something. These take two touches to close them. So if we go in here, one, two, and it'll close. The colours on these and the markings are quite something. If we look at this little one here, beautiful markings and colours. And these are nice to paint too. Use those, the, the idea of the veins, for all sorts of plants and flowers. And the honeydews down here, sticky, sticky, sticky. And the plants feed themselves, they catch their own dinner. 
But again, if we want to know how droplets and water works, this is a good one to take a very close up photograph and then we can use that to get the idea if we don't have something like hostas. Rosettes here. Gives me the idea of shape and form and patterns. And it makes it interesting. Interesting to paint and interesting to draw. We're not all brilliant. We can't all expect to be able to draw everything all of the time. So come out and find your inspiration. Look for it. Find it out here. It's here. It's in nature. You will find it. And then once you've found it, think about how you might use it for other things. Where you might use it. The colour of this one here, look at this. colour of it. Difficult one to paint that. Trying to find the right colours for that. Interesting. And here we have the Spotty Brigade. Again, I would be doing these wet into wet, getting up close and personal and putting my green in and then dropping the brown in on top while it was still wet. This is fabulous, isn't it? Two greens here, maybe three even. Definitely sap green right in the middle there. And then you'd make that a little bit bluer with some French ultramarine maybe to get the colour of the leaf and darker again to get the spots. This one's a funny little critter. Again, spotty. And they fascinate me because, again, they're good for animal skins. This is um, ideas, perhaps, for litching on rocks. And this is lovely with the red edge, that pinky red edge. So, all good, good ideas. Ideas that we can use for our paintings. Here's another spotty that I've missed in the back there. So he's quite fun too. And then you have the round blobby ones. So you get all the technical terms with me. So that's my greenhouse and this is uh, something that I can come out and play in all year round. I can bring my sketchbook out here and sit out here in the winter months. It's um, it's heated, it's not hot. I only keep it, uh, make sure it doesn't drop below 10. But it means that I can, if I put a jacket on, come and sit out here in the winter and I can work and I can have a bit of a paint and a sketch. And if you want to think of something different, how about this for an idea? An old pair of wellies that had worn through and were no use to me in the garden anymore and I've asked hubby to drill holes in them and I've filled them with soil and we have plants in there, plants that don't mind not having an awful lot of water. I've done the same with this old teapot and again it gives you something fantastic to sit and draw and I can lift that about, I can move it around and I can sit with that on a table so that I'm comfortable and I can sit and draw that. You can also pot up an old watering can. The chap who helps me in the garden found this in another one of his gardens and offered it to me and I've potted this up and when these flower and the flowers come up above the actual rim of the pot that's also another fabulous one to draw. An old jug Again, I didn't want the jug anymore. It had cracked indoors, but my husband kindly put a couple of holes in the bottom with the drill carefully, and now I have this. Wouldn't have that outside in the winter, of course, but again, it's fantastic for painting and drawing. And when this plant comes out, because it's too large and I repot it with something else, I've got another plant that I can paint again, another painting to do. And here we have another bit of inspiration. This is Socks, who's come to the garden today whilst we're talking, because I'm talking, and you see something like that, a photograph of that would be fantastic to uh, sit and paint with the green behind him and the black stems of this grass in front of him. You couldn't, what, I mean, how can you go wrong? And the lovely paving stones make a good photograph. Hello Socks.
When a plant pot breaks, don't throw it out. I put it back together again like this, put some soil in it, and again, a plant that doesn't mind being deprived of water, poor thing. But again, look, that's a lovely painting. That really is, it's a lovely painting. The large Saracenia I keep indoors because they keep the flies down for me. Whilst we're sitting here, you can hear the flies being trapped and landing up down in these amazing, amazing pictures. And if we look carefully, there's a little fly here, just sitting here, and I would say to you, mate, you're probably doomed. And it's incredible because a lot of these plants, people think that they smell nasty, but they don't actually. These smell of honey. They give off this amazing honey perfume when you walk into the greenhouses where they're grown. And there are hundreds of them. It smells divine. But again, the light through them is rather wonderful. The shape of them is exciting. And I've painted these a lot. And they, you've seen in the greenhouse, they come in all sorts of different colours and shapes and sizes. And uh, that gives you the excitement and the movement. The tops of these plants are quite incredible. This top was, is designed by nature to hover over the top of the picture so that when it rains in the forests, the water doesn't fill the pictures and drown them. Clever, isn't it? It's got its own little umbrella. There are hairs in the neck of the plant and they all point downwards so that when an animal lands up on the hairs, all they can do is skid downwards into the pitcher. And they feed themselves. I don't have to do anything with them at all. But again, it's structure, it's shape, good to paint. So there you have the garden. I know that we're not all lucky enough to be able to have such a facility, but when I lived in a flat, I just used my windowsill in my bedroom and I grew bits and pieces on there, scrounged things from friends, and they were just good enough for me to draw them. Inspiration is all around us. Going back to that idea and where those ideas come from, do you like to read? Oh, I do love a good book. My goodness, I can't tell you. I couldn't imagine my life without a book. And I think, realistically, the first thing that kicked me off with all this dragon idea, I was probably in my late teens to mm, just hitting 20. And I'd started going to work and sitting on the train, I'll never forget it, reading these books here. Anne McCaffrey and the skies of Pern. Novels all about this incredible planet called Pern and riders, dragon riders, who had dragons and their job was to destroy this thread that came down from a planet every time it circled its orbit when it was close to their planet used to shed these red threads and the dragons had to fly the skies and burn them. Incredible. Whole series of books, whole series. And I used to sit on the train avidly reading these. So excited to see what was going to happen next. And then how about this? Something a little more up to date. You might like this. This is an author called Kim Harrison, and this is the first in the series. It's called Dead Witch Walking, and that's a series of books. This is all about a strange world, and she's a witch, but she just casts spells. She's clever with it. She, it's none of this black magic stuff that we come to expect from witches. She lives in an unsanctified church and she has a friend who's a pixie and the pixie lives and travels in the hoop earrings that she wears. He sits under her hair on the, on the earrings and, and talks to her as they travel around. And her flatmate is a lady called Ruby. Ivy, not Ruby, Ivy. And Ivy 
is a vampire, but she's sworn off blood. And the three of them run a detective agency. So they're out there sorting out all the angels and the demons and the little devils and the pixies that misbehave. It's great fun. Really, really good fun. You'd love it. But recently, this book has just come out. And this is called The Priory of the Orange Tree. And I'll hold it up so that you can see it. And this one is by somebody called Samantha Shannon, and my goodness, it's such a good read. It, a huge, huge book, I mean a thousand pages, and it is stunning. The world she creates and the people who inhabit it are just amazing. I'll leave all of the um, relevant names and titles on this video at the end so that you can go and have a little look at those. But the inspiration is there. These characters really drive me. I like to imagine my own worlds and when I paint a picture I tell a story as I said earlier but we'll talk more about that on another video. So until next time, lovely to see you. Thank you for joining me. Sharon Hurst here signing out from the studio. See you next time.